So I thought I'd do a quick video on how to take the carb off as well as the fuel pump on a Johnson 25. This model's a 1987. Um, already took the cowling off, but I put a new lower unit on this recently, so now it's time to get it running a little bit better. This is probably only going to help maybe the one person in the world who owns one of these motors and doesn't actually know how to clean the carb. But for that one person, here you go. In order to get the um, carburetor off the block, you have to take the starter motor off. If yours is a pull start, then you probably don't have this step. Um, but that requires taking that bolt and that bolt off. And then make sure you disconnect it from the uh, battery. You can see what happens when you forget to do that. Okay, so now that I got those two bolts off, um, you have a bolt here holding the starter solenoid on through this bracket and a second one here. And there's a bolt here that holds the starter motor in place. So you can't really reach it too easily the way it is now. So what I like to do is undo these two screws here so that this part will wobble. And then that gives you access to that. So you can loosen the starter solenoid off, pull it off, and then you have pretty good access to that bolt. There might be a better way, but I haven't found it yet. So actually using this extension and a wobble adapter, I was able to get at that nut without having to take the solenoid off, but you do have to loosen these two screws here and take off these two metal brackets um, in order to loosen the starter motor and pull it out of the way. And that finally exposes these two nuts here that hold your entire carburetor to the block. So you loosen those two off and you'll be able to pull it off and then disconnect the hoses obviously. Okay, so the carb's out. There's that gasket that uh, seals the carb to the block. Ordinarily, I would replace it because my time is more valuable than the few dollars that the gasket costs, um, but that one's in great shape, so I'll reuse it. And then um, this is the carburetor itself. These are the um, four screws that hold the bowl onto the rest of the carburetor, so I'll take those off here shortly and start cleaning her out. So looking in here, you can see a little bit of debris in the bowl. Um, so that's probably what's causing my problem and then this gasket looks pretty good um, But what I'm going to do is there's one of the jets and that comes out in there So what I'm going to do is blow a bunch of carb cleaner through there And then um, you have to take the float off because there's another nozzle under there and in order to get out this one um, You actually have to undo this little spring and then that allows you to take the whole float off So let me do that real quick so there's that little spring and then this float pivots around this little pin so I can just pull that right out. And try not to lose all these little things and then my float comes off and there's a valve in here. Let's focus. You can take that out. That looks like it's in great shape which it should be because I just replaced it last year. And then there's a valve in there that I need to blow out. So what I do is I just take my carb cleaner and I squirt it into where all your hoses connect. Like there's one spot there that looks pretty clear. And then all the other hose connections, all these little ports and valves and everything. Try to get them as clean as possible. I usually don't actually remove them um, unless they seem like they're really filthy. Okay, so I took it all apart, cleaned out all the little ports and stuff, and everything looked pretty clean, um, aside from the small amount of debris I saw in the carb bowl. So I don't think that was what's causing my motor to die. So next step is to take apart the fuel pump. And this is this thing here on the left side of the motor. Um, I have had issues with these before where the gaskets get chewed up by the ethanol and the fuel. Um, and they break off little bits and send them downstream and clog off your carb So I'm gonna take this thing apart and see what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward to pull this thing off um, There's a port down here and then uh, Your fuel line comes in here And so you just pop these off and then you have to undo these two bottom screws And you can take it out of the motor um, and undo the rest of these screws and see what the membranes look like Okay, so I have pulled it off the motor. Here's the gasket. I don't know if you can tell but it's a little beat up definitely not beat up enough that it's what's causing my problems but after you pull these screws off this whole thing comes apart okay so i had to loosen this screw up and then there's a little filter basket in there 
There's also a little O-ring on here. Don't lose that. And then these come apart nicely. So here's one membrane. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. But I'll pull that off of there and take a look at both sides of it. And here's how this goes. These two separate. I need two hands. Hold on. So I popped it apart and there's a little spring and a little piston that got messed up on me. But basically what happens is this sits in here just like so. And that little piston drives this membrane back and forth from one side to the other. And then that's how your fuel gets pumped. Same thing's going on down here. And this is all driven by vacuum off the engine. So I'm going to take all this a close look at all this and clean it all out, but I don't think that's my problem either. All right, so I put that back together and stuck it on the side of the engine. I just used the same gasket because I didn't feel like burning a new one, even though I think I have a spare. I just flipped it around to give it new mating surfaces, but all these are tight. The hoses are hooked back up together like they were before. I guess I'll put this little zip tie on. I don't really know if these are necessary, but whatever. And then I'll put the carburetor on and see if she'll run. I'm not sure that I solved whatever problem I was having out on the lake today, but uh, uh, maybe there was a little bit of debris in the carb that I cleared out without realizing it. Tightened the carburetor back on, and I reconnected the three hoses. There's one there, uh, one here. This one, in case you get confused, runs to that portion of the choke, and then this one runs from that portion of the choke to there, and there's a one further down and that one comes back from the uh, the fuel pump there on the other side um, but as I was saying uh, the next step is to get this back on and see if she'll chooch um, so you got to get these little brackets back here on here and around there and then tighten those two Phillips screws back on let me do that real quick all right so I got it all connected up water is running it's primed connected to fuel connected to battery so we'll see if it runs um, the issue I was having on the water is that at full throttle it just wasn't getting enough gas and eventually it would die but it wouldn't run a little while on low throttle so it ought to start up and uh, I'm gonna have to run it at full throttle and see if I still have that issue so let's see what happens here open the choke a little bit give her a chooch Okay, so everything was running fine, but I shut it down quickly because I noticed steam was coming out of my um, uh, water discharge ho tube. Um, so I anticipate that my water pump was also bad. Okay, so how to take off the lower unit and uh, replace the water pump. So there's four bolts. You can see the holes right there and there. Undo and loosen those. And then there's this plastic grate with a screw on either side. Some of them have two screws on each side. So if you loosen those up, then that'll ex expose the, um, the shift rod. And then there's two nuts right there uh, that's kind of screw into each other. And if you separate those two nuts, then you'll be able to pull the unit off.
So those two nuts are a huge pain in the ass to come out, but basically you want to hold this one still and spin this one off, and then these two halves will separate. Um, and then uh, once you have it separated, uh, this will be up on here, and there's this little plastic retainer ring which has a slit in one side, and that goes around here like that. And then, so you slide this up, and then you can pop this thing off, and then this will slide down and off. And then once that's free, you can slide the whole lower unit off of the uh, power head. Okay, so if you pop these six nuts or bolts holding this plastic housing on, that'll just slide right off. There's a metal plate there with a gasket underneath it. Um, I just recently replaced that gasket, so I'm not getting into that. Um, but I think what happened is I ran out of water, and this overheated and seized up. Um, so when I throttled up, the earmuffs slipped off my lower unit, I think, and uh, caused this to run dry, that overheated, and then it seized up and stopped pumping. Okay, so I put the lower unit together, and it seems to be good. So now, in order to uh, reassemble it, I like to put the water tube in separately. There's supposed to be a little gasket up here on the end that goes into the power head. I just made one out of some rubber. Um, I don't really think it does much. When I took the motor apart, mine never had the gasket on, so whatever. And then, looking up in here, that goes way up in there. So I just kind of shove that in there, and then this part is good, and let's slide the lower on. Okay, so I put everything together and started her up. You can see how I rigged these zip ties up to keep the earmuffs from slipping off where they need to be. That actually worked pretty nice. I could rev up the throttle and she ran at full speed without any issues. Pretty cool. So um, now that everything's running good, I'm thinking it was probably just a little bit of schmutz in the carburetor that I cleared out and it's running good now. So you can see that I peeled off all that tape that somebody wrapped around the starter solenoid here um, in order to try to get it to fit inside that bracket nice and snug. Um, so I took all that off because it wasn't really fitting and I took a piece of, I think this is inch and a quarter PVC, I cut off a little ring and I cut a slit in it and that kind of pops on over there and my plan is to snug that in there and then it ought to tighten down and finally stay in place without popping out like that all the time. In order to get at these nuts more easily um, I loosened up the bolts on that were here and also here and here um, so that I could rotate the throttle out of my way. So let's get it all back together and see how she looks. Okay, so that actually worked out pretty nicely. That spacer is perfect for making that bracket hold my solenoid in place nicely. And then um, you can see what I had loosened up right here and here in order to be able to rotate this whole um, rod or whatever it's called out of the way and access this and that bolt. Um, so those are snug, everything's in place. I'm gonna do another startup and see how she runs. I'm pretty happy with that. That's running about as good as it gets. We'll have to get her out on the water and see how she runs tomorrow.